Good afternoon, welcome back to Questioning Sense with me, Matt. I hope you guys are well. All is going swimmingly here. Finished work, came home, had a shower, time for a video. Um, and a really, really good video today as well. This is, uh, we're here to talk about a fragrance called Rannoch, which is a Scottish word. Um, from a Scottish house and it's another collaboration between Matt Wilson of Norton and Wilson fame and the executive shaving company based in Scotland. Um, they have made a few collaborations before. Um, we talked about one called Monroe. There's a video of that a while back um, and there's another video of another one I really really liked as well called Lomond. So look out for those two because both of these fragrances, this and Monroe are still available. Um, but they have a new one out and it's called a Rannoch. So on a rare occasion, I'm going to show you the box. It comes like that, very simplistic, but rather stylishly done. Nice. And wait for it, because the bottle on this one, I think the Executive Shaving Company are really trying to set out their stall to become quite a serious um, fragrance house. And so they should, because, you know, the fragrances that I've tried from them, you know, their own ones, they sell others as well. They sell fragrances from other houses, which I don't know too much about. Um, but their own, you know, the fragrances they develop with, with Matt are all very, very, very good. But I think what they're doing now is they're stepping it up a bit. Um, and this is Rannoch. This is what it looks like. I mean, this weighs a ton. Beautiful wooden cap. You know, this is really, really good presentation. The, the atomizer is perfect. Let me hold that for a minute. I mean, it's a gorgeous bottle. Really quite impressive stuff. Um, so I think they're really kind of making some, some sort of major movement in, in, the, um, in the fragrance industry because, you know, they should be taken very seriously because they're making excellent perfumes. I mean, this is a 100 ml bottle and it costs 85 pounds. Fantastic. You know, this is really, really good, good stuff and great value. So... When I heard that there was a fragrance coming out, I was very, very excited, and I was lucky that they, they sent me a bottle for the purposes of this review. Um, obviously, if I didn't like the fragrance, we would have had a chat, um, and this review wouldn't be happening. But Matt actually reminded me that I'd smelt this in, in its earlier stages when I didn't even know it was going to become Rannoch. See, I get on really, really well with Matt. Um, we talk fragrance quite a lot, and quite often he sends me fragrances just in the development stage, just to you know to have a chat about them and get an opinion. So I had actually smelt Rannoch um, when it was in its development days, um, but as I say, I didn't know that this was going to become Rannoch. And then when Rannoch um, arrived, it had changed quite considerably from the sample that I received. So what's it all about? Well, from a company called the Executive Shaving Company, you would expect this to be in that kind of world. And true to form, it is a kind of a barbershop, um, but it's a really, really good one. So what we'll do, um, I'm wearing it now, but I'm gonna spray another tiny bit just for the opening. And then we'll talk a little bit about, well, we'll go through the notes and then we'll talk a little bit more about the fragrance. So let me give it a quick spray and you can see the atomizer at work. Boom, look at that. It's like a huge cloud of beautiful stuff hitting your skin. It's quite a thick fragrance. I, th I think it's an EDP. I'm pretty sure it is an EDP. Well, it's a, yeah, it's an eau de parfum and it behaves like an eau de parfum as well. So what we do now, we'll let that settle down and we'll go through the notes and then we'll talk a bit more about the perfume. Okay, so on the top you have plum, you have cardamom and you have juniper with bitter orange. And then you have some rose, some geranium, some violet, and then in the base you have some oud, Western oud, and then you have some leather, you have some cedar, some patchouli, and a little tiny bit of tonka bean. So true to form, we have a lot going on. And it's worth looking at barbershops in general at this point, because there's so many different types of barbershop fragrance out there. Um, and it's a genre that's very endearing. Lots of people love the barbershop um, style fragrance. And I get it, they're really, really nice. And if you're kind of like a gentleman or a certain age, or if you're a younger thruster that really likes to smell classy, then barbershops are one of the best fragrances to wear to achieve that. The only problem with barbershops is a standard, bog standard classic barbershop. If we look at this one here, for example, I'm gonna use some various bottles throughout this review as prompts and, you know, just to, just to try and reiterate what I'm saying. So if we look at this one, Azaro Poron, one of the most famous barbershops style fragrances out there. It's been around since 78, so it's really stood the test of time, but, you know, it's still nice to wear. I mean, this is a bottle I have. I've had it a very long time, and I've, very, I've even given someone a decant out there, so you can see I barely wear it. And there's a reason for that. It's quality, it's lovely, but it's quite dull. Now, I keep it because I'd rather have it in my collection than suddenly have to run out and buy it. Um, 
although I never wear it, it's just one I like to hang on to. As a hoarder, I've got issues. Um, but the thing is with the Zaro, it's very well done. It's a classic in the genre, but it's a bit dull. Um, and this is the sort of fragrance people think about when they, you know, when people talk about barbershops, people think about this kind of frag. And it is good, uh, but it is dull. And then on the flip side of that, you'll have something like Sartorial from Penhaligon's, one of my favorite, if not my favorite barbershop. Um, this is a lot more modern than a Zaro. And I think this is a lot more contemporary and a lot more wearable, simply because it's got a lot more going on. It's, it's not just one kind of thing happening in the fragrance. It uses lots of materials all the way through. And this is why I think Rannoch is gonna do so well, because I think this is beautiful. When this fragrance hits your skin like you've just seen, you are aware of the fruit. But nothing particularly jumps out as a fruit. So you have the plum, the orange are the two here. It does give a slightly bitter um, opening. So you have a fleshiness from the fruits, but there's a bitterness, so it's not overly sweet. What you do get though, is the cardamom. And there's also a tiny bit of cumin hiding in the background. It gives this a really spiced opening. Um, and when, when I say spiced, it doesn't take you on, an, on a journey anywhere. You're not suddenly transported to, you know, exotic foreign lands as you smell your skin. Not like that. What it does is it gives the fruit some depth. It balances out the natural sweetness that's going to be in the fruit, especially like plums. But there's, I always want to laugh when I say plum. Um, but especially when you've got the natural sweetness of things like plums, they are going to be quite sweet. And what these spices do, it balances it and gives it some depth and it works really, really well. The orange is indeed bitter, but not overly bitter. What you have is perfect equilibrium, nothing too much and nothing too little. And this stays like this for a while and the spices really do start to develop. Don't be scared of the cumin because it doesn't smell like a body odor. It doesn't smell, you know, like uh, like savory, like a, a curry or something like that. Or if you're cooking and, you know, when you're toasting spices and sometimes a cumin comes up and, and sort of envelops you, it doesn't do that. It just gives another little dimension to this wonderful opening of the interestingly of the florals that come in rose and geranium kind of turn into the same sort of thing you can't really tell them apart well i certainly can't but now violet is often my nemesis um, and in this one it doesn't it's it's beautiful it really really suits the fragrance it gives it a chance to do a little bit of a left turn and what i'm trying to get across here with rannock is rannock does what this one does it's non-linear. It's a they're genuine barbershop fragrances, but they both take you on a wonderful journey, which is why I love them so much. It's really, really well done. In fact, with that cumin-y, fruity opening, I'm also reminded of another fragrance which I adore, and that is Eucharist from GOF Trumper, or George Trumper. This is a fantastic, classic, um, menacing, brooding, darker kind of uh, barbershop fragrance, which in some respects, so is Rannoch. Now this one uses um, blackcurrant and there's no blackcurrant in Rannoch. So again, it doesn't smell like Eucharist EDP, but it does the same kind of thing. And they both do it with some aplomb, not a plum, a plomb. Really, really good stuff. Um, so yeah, what I'm trying to get across is there are lots of um, really well-known and real loved fragrances that remind me of Rannoch, but not at the same time. So when you get to the dry down, you have a very polite Western oud with the leather, um, the cedar, yeah, kind of. But for me, it's the patchouli. The patchouli becomes the more dominant material. And that in itself reminds me of another classic barbershop style fragrance, and that's Galen's Heritage. Beauty. I mean, look how much of that I've got through. And I've got a lot of fragrances I wear Heritage an awful lot. And then Rannock starts to remind me a little of Heritage in the base. Um, and what I noticed when I was wearing it today at work, after about four and a half hours, for me, it's nearly all about the leather and the patchouli together, but the leather is soft and supple. It's not difficult, it's not um, It's not overly potent, it's not too strong, it's all well blended. Patchouli in this case, when, when it hits you um, in the base of Rannoch, it becomes really, really classy, it's beautifully done. So it's not a muddy patch, it's not chocolatey, it's not dirty. It's just sort of gentlemanly, if such a smell existed. Uh, and that's where Rannock, for me, this is my favorite part. About four and a half, five hours in when the leather and the patch is the most dominant part of it. It's brilliant at this stage. And then 
just when you think it's going to peter out to become a skin scent and, and it's finished all its twists and turns, that's when you'll notice the Tonka. And the Tonka is not particularly sweet, but what it does is it adds a creaminess to this fragrance and you've got texture. And what I also have to point out about Rana is it's, this is why it's ne never going to be a plain or boring barbershop. This has got texture all the way through it. You can feel it. You, it's just, you're constantly exploring this fragrance. Um, and every time you wear it, you're going to find something new. And that is so, so rare in the barbershop genre that you are constantly, you know, finding evolving notes and materials within the fragrance, especially, you know, when it's like this kind of fragrance. So if you're, you know, bored of that over the top citrus lavender combination, Rannoch is going to be absolutely perfect for you. And it's just excellent. Um, everything around it smells good. It smells quite a natural fragrance. Um, now, Matt himself, when you speak to him, He's really, really good with perfume. He loves pretty much everything. He's got a very wide variety of tastes. But one thing Matt's never that fussed about is performance. Um, he doesn't really care how long a perfume lasts. But him and the executive shaving company, when they've got their heads together, they have both realized that their clients will want something that lasts, something that has got real presence, something that people will, you know, has got some decent performance, a little projection, some good sillage, and longevity and the Rannoch absolutely does this. So in order to achieve that, obviously you're gonna find that there's some sort of modern aroma chemicals within the fragrance. There's possibly a little bit of ambroxan or something of that ilk in the dry down and you may pick up on it. And what that does is it gives the, the perfume more life. It gives you better value um, and it doesn't compromise on smell. Yes, it, you may lose some of that pure natural smell to the fragrance, but let's face it, all the, all the fragrances that I've shown you so far in this video, none of them are natural, are completely natural at all. They're all using aroma fragrance, aroma chemicals to, to, to enhance the longevity of the, the, the perfume. And Rannoch does it really, really well. It doesn't become overly synthetic is what I'm trying to say rather clumsily um, and a bit long-windedly. So it's, it's good. If you're worried about performance, don't be. Rannoch is a true EDP. It's a very long lasting fragrance with um, good projection and good sillage performs admirably. So in closing, this is a bit of a star. It's modern enough for everyone, but it's got classic leanings. So it, if you're an older guy who wants to smell fantastic and smart, this is gonna be for you. If you're a younger guy that just wants to smell great, this is gonna be for you. If you're bored of barbershops, this is also gonna be for you. It ticks every box. Now, because it is obviously a barbershop, it's gonna, I should have a barbershop pound jar and I have to put a pound in it every time I say the word. It's definitely a masculine fragrance. It's built to be a masculine fragrance. Again, I think it would smell fantastic on a woman. Um, I'm not sure, my wife doesn't like this particular kind of fragrance, so she's not interested in trying it, but I think it would smell great on her. Um, so it is what it is. It's an excellent modern take on a classic genre um, with a couple of twists just to keep you going. And it's a bit of an adventure in a bottle, I think. Um, I really enjoy it and I'm really, really happy to have it in my collection. It's probably the easiest fragrance for me to, to grab when I'm starting work. I mean, when I, when I work in, on an early shift, I'm up at four in the morning. So, you know, trying to think about what fragrance I'm gonna wear that day is probably the last thing on my mind. I just wanna get coffees down my neck. Um, so having this within grabbing range means I'm always gonna have a treat. And it's the perfect one to wear for a long day as well because it has so many twists and turns, you will always learn something new about the fragrance. So there you have it, a completely gushing review um, about Rannoch from the Executive Shaving Company. And as I did mention earlier, at 85 pounds for 100 mil, it's a bit of a bargain. Anyway, thank you ever so much for your time. I hope you appreciate the video and we shall see you soon on the next video. Oh, you know, if you've got any other questions, as always, Instagram, Questioning Sense, just send me a message there and I'll be more than happy to answer it. So thank you very much for your time and we shall see you soon. Cheers, thanks, and bye.